slow push when the ball gets caught. Cap. Where's a girl? On this Friday night, we welcome you to Tampa, Florida, as the Mustangs, ranked third in the nation, come to town with their unbeaten record, trying to remain unbeaten in American Conference play. Standing in their way, the Bulls, who have not lost to SMU in their last seven meetings, looking to defend their home field at Corbett Stadium. It's men's soccer here in the American tonight on the American Digital Network. Take a look at the table coming into this evening. Memphis, the lone 2-0 squad. USF right now at 1-0. Their match against Tulsa ultimately will have to be replayed from minute number zero on. We'll have more on that in a little bit. And SMU with that battle against UCF, they would play finally 110 minutes and settle for a draw this past weekend. On that note, welcome inside the broadcast booth, everyone. Lincoln Rose, Thomas Garensway. Great to have you with us for this matchup. 
And it's just another classic here tonight in the American. Absolutely. Uh, two teams high-flying, SMU especially, with that undefeated record. Um, but I see both teams coming out strong, especially with USF at home. A lot of goals in this game, I think. Let's take a look at your keys, the matchup. First up for the visitors out of Dallas. For SMU, I think, you know, with that undefeated record, they need to continue to play with that swagger. Um, they're playing with a ton of confidence, as I said, all the way across the pitch and coming to this match, as I said, undefeated, having outscored their opponents 34-6. to And, of course, for the Bulls, how do they continue to play so well here at home? Uh, well, I think they really need to trust in the spine of their team. Uh, Adrian Bilhart, Josue Mong, and Javane Brown um, have started every game this season. They really need to lean on those leaders and their respective parts of the field. Well, the Mustangs trailed twice by multiple goals in their meeting last weekend against UCF. But finally, the PK helped level the field, forcing that draw as Costa came through, able to slot it home. Well, Costa really is the heartbeat of this midfield. He's been uh, the American Offensive Player of the Week for the past two weeks after tallying two goals and three assists in his last three matches. He's such a big player in this midfield. And, of course, when you look at Coach Butehorn's squad, great ties with the Jamaican national team, ultimately lands Javane Brown in Tampa for his college career. As I mentioned earlier, Brown is an, is an important part of the spine of this team. He's a full Jamaican international, as you just mentioned, with four caps, and is the true leader of this Bulls back line. Bulls and Mustangs opening kick when you rejoin us here on the American Digital Network. At SMU, I found professors who care about my success. And the space to take risks. Make mistakes and grow quickly. These experiences are helping me chart my own course. Dallas's can-do culture and SMU support bring out the best in me. We are creators, innovators, disruptors, builders, and problem solvers shaping the future. If we think it, it gets done. That's the enterprising spirit of SMU. Come reimagine the world with us. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Introductions wrapping up here at Corbett Stadium. Bulls and Mustangs set to go. Lincoln Rose, Thomas Garen Zoe with you. And for the first time tonight, a chance to check in pitch side with Andy Wontor. Andy, welcome. Number 27. Thank you, Lincoln. Well, for USF and SMU, they are keeping things in perspective. Both of them say this is just a conference game. They're not going to get worried or hyped up about the kind of opponent they are facing. Coach Hudson said they talk a lot about not talking about it, the rankings, the standings. He says those are only good for the recruits and for the fans. They aren't good for a team, and they aren't good for the coaches. We'll see exactly what happens in this game coming up. Yeah, Andy, thank you very much. Of course, uh, SMU ranks again this weekend the top five the rest of the school has loved promoting it in fact a big support from the rest of their campus the football team came out to watch their last outing against UCF and well of course UCF's rivals right here in Tampa as we will pause for the national anthem opening kick next Great evening for college soccer, 80 degrees here on this evening in Tampa. Of course, sun has long since set as Bob Butehorn in year number three with the Bulls. Ready to get underway. Of course, uh, great success at Florida Gulf Coast. Last time the Bulls were in the NCAA tournament was 2016. They were actually knocked out in that first round by Bob Butehorn at his previous stop. He's now trying to get them back into the NCAA postseason where they've been 
10 of the last 14 years. As again, the Bulls right now sitting at 1 and 0 after that match against Tulsa went just officially a little under 70 minutes, could not be officially deemed a completed match due to weather. They'll have to do it up again. Meanwhile, more than 70 minutes, it was 110 minutes for Kevin Hudson's squad, the former SMU standout who has since led SMU to each of the last two automatic bids and tournament titles out of the American. Last year, a tie for the regular season best record. The year before, had it outright over there in Dallas. A lot of trophies have been accumulated in this brief time for Coach Hudson back at his alma mater. As Andy mentioned, he doesn't want to hear about the rankings, but when he showed up on a business trip here today, he was just as loose as the rest of the Mustangs, ready to go for at least 90 minutes against these Bulls. We'll point out USF has not had to go to overtime this year. And as much as the Bulls might like to root against those rivals from Orlando and UCF, they probably liked the outcome in Dallas last weekend with these Mustangs where it went as long as possible, and each team just had to settle for one point. Well, I really think it also puts into perspective that, you know, this SMU team looked invincible going into that game last week, but it showed after conceding three goals um, that, that their defenses can be breached. And, uh, USF will wonder if, if that's in their heads a little bit today. SMU had only allowed three goals all year. All of a sudden, UCF found three goals in one night. SMU twice had to battle back from a two-goal deficit. Meanwhile, Harrison Devonish Mears back in goal this year for USF. Three shutouts so far this season for the Australian goalkeeper in his senior campaign. Boy, has he emerged as a leader really has a great command of that back line and has earned all the praise that has come his way. I think him and Javane Brown uh, form a really good partnership as leaders of that back line, and it really shows in their play. Of course, Grant Makala, who had been so stingy this year before that outing against UCF, hard to pin any of those goals on him, but he will hope to find a clean sheet here tonight against Bob Butehorn's Bulls. So, again, USF traveled to Tulsa last weekend. Weather did not permit them to finish that match, and because it did not go 70 minutes, they will have to play it again later on this season from the start. So that'll negate a couple of goals that the Bulls had put up. As Bulls in white, SMU in black here on the road this evening. Great to have you with us as our fall sport coverage continues here on the American Digital Network. Bulls have not allowed a first half goal this year. A lot of low scoring affairs involving USF. As for the Mustangs, you're looking at Knut Ollander, the sophomore out of Norway. As he'll send this one inside the 18, it'll linger. Bulls struggling to clear. And this is an ominous start for USF against an opportunistic SMU side. You saw the brief touch from Costa. Nothing came of it, but Mustangs finally land on this ball. Sent in from Warrington. Well, on a nice evening like this, you saw all the fans who have found their favorite vantage point, some of them on the berm with their picnic blankets. A perfect evening for college soccer here on campus. Uh, the Bulls are under attack here in this opening couple of minutes now. SMU really is a possession-based team. They like to come out quick and, and high-flying, and ultimately they want all of the ball if they can have it. And they're going to push forward and really put this back line of USF under pressure. These two teams met and played to a 1-1 draw last year in their only meeting. Both would make their way to Orlando for the postseason tournament in the American. As the Bulls, oh, just a touch behind, but still on this one. As right now dancing with that ball is Bill Hart, the standout German out of Berlin. It was a good bit of play on the break from USF and a little, a little glimpse of some offensive vigor from them. Again, SMU ranked third in the nation this week. They had been unbeaten and untied before UCF played them to a draw. 
Uh, both coaches in good spirits at the end of that match, which we had right here on the American Digital Network last weekend. After the, each team saw a great deal of fight from their respective student athletes. Along the back line here with Berdelli, who found his first goal against UCF to pull it back within one at the time. It was Costa who helped create some chaos, including an own goal from UCF, and then finally win a penalty, which he converted to level at 3-0. That would keep SMU unbeaten. USF's only official result so far this year. Again, against UConn. As Ponder. Back over to Berdelli. Transfer out in North Carolina. And unable to feed that one through. Bulls intervene. Can they get a quick counter the other way? It's just been a little off so far as that ball intended for Claudel. Claudel, the freshman out of France. Finally back from injuries. Looks to be full strength. That gives a nice di different dimension for Bob Butehorn's squad. That was a nice switch from midfield down to this right-hand side, and a decent cross, just no one there to meet it in the middle of the box for USF, but they haven't had much of the ball in the first few minutes, but what, what they've done with it so far is really have quality possession rather than quantity. Jonathan Rosales sent that one to the top of the 18 just to test the discipline of SMU. Uh, so far, we have not seen Grant Makla have to intervene here. The junior who has a bit of a homecoming tonight as he is from Destin, Florida. Went to Fort Walton Beach High School here in the Sunshine State. We are mindful that Florida and Texas are both fairly large states. Uh, we'll, we'll still label it a homecoming back within the state borders. Again, USF in the home white kits tonight. On their heels early in these opening five minutes. Have had a couple of probing opportunities. Uh, it's scoreless thus far. These Bulls are off to their best start through eight matches since 2009, a decade ago, when they started 6-1-1. One, one. Mentioned their last NCAA tournament was 2016. Obviously a goal of theirs to get back this year and certainly an automatic bid out of the American would advance that cause. And as well as SMU has performed these past few years under Kevin Hudson, in their last seven outings, they've yet to find a win against this USF Sun. They lead the all-time series, four wins, four draws, just one loss. Talking about the Bulls against SMU. And opportunity will slip away out there on the wing. Cross midfield with Warrington. He gets the start in the midfield tonight, the sophomore out of Oklahoma. It's a reminder that SMU, as much talent as they can find in Dallas, they also have an additional recruiting goal each year of grabbing the top two players out of the Sooner State. As Kevin Hudson's had success doing so. Again, Kevin Hudson's Mustangs have only conceded one goal in the first half this year. They have outscored their opposition 17 to 1. With that said, that six goal outing, the 3 3 draw with UCF last weekend was scoreless at the half. All six goals came after the intermission. As that ball slips off the right foot of Eddie Munjoma. And Munjoma, a defender who loves to care, cover a lot of ground. Nikki Hernandez looking for a highlight reel pass, but ultimately nothing will come of it as Devonish Mears squeezes it in. And that's as close as Grant Makla has come to a ball tonight. 
Well, it's not quite scarf weather, but it seems like uh, with soccer, with football, it always is scarf weather. 80 degrees in Tampa. Nice to see the students come out and support the team on a Friday night. Opportunity with Costa, top of the 18. He'll lay it off. And trying to drop a dime for Munjoma, who sends it over the crossbar. Well, it was a beautiful through ball to Costa, and he left it off for Munjoma, who just completely scuffs it, as we're going to see here. It's a beautiful ball in outside of the foot. Beautifully into the path of Costa. Nice little back heel, Munjoma, with his right foot. Just gets nowhere near the net, and USF are led off there. If they were suiting up for Charlie Strong, that would have been three points. But we remain scoreless here. I mentioned SMU's football program with Coach Dykes. Also unbeaten. There's been a lot to cheer for in Dallas. Costa. As this will slip back to Noah Hilt. SMU wins it back. Oof. And Costa finally earns the whistle. This is after he'd been pinballing off some bulls. Bit of, bit of physical play there, but good from Costa to, to draw the foul. Just getting, the, getting his body in between the defender and the ball. Tries to nutmeg that USF bull. He's not having anything of it. Eventually, Costa gets the foul, and we'll see what kind of dangerous ball he can put in here. So Costa will handle this. The sophomore round of Rio de Janeiro. And started his career in Division II over in California at Azusa Pacific. A highly sought after transfer that ultimately landed with the Mustangs. Kevin Hudson already labels him as among the, among the best attacking midfielders in the nation. An opportunity here to get SMU on the board with this service as we are in the 10th minute in Tampa. So substitution allowed Steven Rutterham sophomore from the Bay Area over in St. Pete Costa to the back post punched out by Devonish Mears in time Let's get goalkeeping but ultimately offside, but that was a dangerous ball from Costa Costa But again, like we said strong goalkeeping coming off his line from Mears not afraid of a little contact. Dangerous early sign there from, from set pieces from Costa and from SMU. Flag was up. As we're about to say farewell to minute number 10. And USF has outscored their opponents this year in the first half, 6-0. Mustangs, a few more fireworks before halftime this year, 17 first half goals. Conceding one. Kevin Hudson was a little concerned there might be some complacency in Dallas this year after they had managed to collect more hardware a year ago, including that shootout victory in Orlando for the tournament title for a second straight year at the expense of UCF. As the toss here from Jonathan Rosales. Bulls hoping SMU will have a miscue. And Warrington got the start tonight in the midfield. They'll find a little more breathing room on the right wing.
It'll stay with SMU. As a rare touch from Garrett McLaughlin here early in this one, the senior out of OKC. As you see that berm, the crowd is growing. And being able to toss that ball into the heart of the box, such a weapon, almost a set piece in its own right. And that will not go unnoticed as the ball will continue with USF. I believe we had a blowout. As the pit crew will have to help with that missing tire. Munjoma. Again, Eddie Munjoma, one of their four men out of Lone Star from that Dallas area. That is a region that Kevin Hudson wants to have locked down to fill the roster of his Mustangs year in, year out. I think he does. SMU is such a historically great soccer program, both for men's and women's. I don't see any reason why anyone from the Dallas area wouldn't want to go there. Lost a lot of talent two years ago when they had that dominating run. Able to host the conference tournament. Capped by that golden goal from Emil Quasho. But last year, SMU wound up at the exact same spot, capturing the tournament title. Just had to work even harder for it. Certainly some voids to fill this year. Early on, officially just one shot taken in this match. It came from Munjoma. That ball that cleared over the crossbar. You saw a moment ago the familiar face of Tim Debbie Singh, our referee. Familiar name around both the college and the professional game. Attack from Costa there in the midfield. And he'll head his back, and that will allow Makula to secure this one. So that draw with UCF kept SMU and the Knights behind Memphis, who is 2-0 coming into this weekend. Memphis women have been phenomenal. They captured the women's tournament title right here on this pitch last year. When USF women had claimed the number one seed in the hosting rights. And speaking of Memphis, of course, USF last year beat Memphis in the regular season finale, only to be knocked out by the number six seed Tigers and they're meeting in Orlando in the conference tournament. And that's how the season would end for the Bulls, short of the national postseason tournament for a second straight year. Top of the 18, Munjoma tries to slip one through with that left boot. Not sure if it would have been on frame. Devinish Mears intervenes, unable to secure it, and it'll be a corner kick for SMU. Munjoma dangerous early on here in this first half, getting forward twice. Should have probably had a goal, and that was a decent shot on goal there as well, showing his skill with a couple step overs forcing a save from Mears. We're seeing this so often where defenders who cover a lot of ground and all of a sudden become offensive weapons like Munjoma. So Avion Flanagan joined the pack there up top for the Bulls. A shot will never come and simply a chance to boot this one away for Devonish Mears. SMU recognizing the Bulls' tendency to try to play short from goal kicks. Starting with that high press, they regain possession. The only time tonight that we have seen Makula touch the ball is when 
his own teammates in black send it to him. The Mustangs surely are on the front foot here in the second half, in this first half, excuse me. But I wouldn't sleep on this USF front line. Again, Adrian Billhart definitely dangerous when he's on the ball. Absolutely have to stay alert for 90 minutes. If SMU keeps this up for another half hour, Mackle is going to be charged for admission. Number three team in the nation wearing all black tonight with the exception of a few white boots. Got off to that 9-0 start, played to the draw against UCF after 110 minutes in Dallas between those two sides. UCF struck first. They would lead 2-0 and later 3-1 against Coach Hudson's squad. He would see his Mustangs battle back. Capped off by that penalty from Costa to pull even at 3-3. Bulls, a rare opportunity here. Quick touch and go. Spinning through defenders, but just too much to ask from Enrique Gaina. The Brazilian who in his own right, the defender for the Bulls who can cover a lot of grounds. Back on it here. Bill Hart. Needs help wide. Get it back to the native of Berlin. He'll suck in a second defender. Munchoma sends this ball through. Tr wanted to create some chaos. And this ball is still alive on the feet of USF. That was a beautiful ball across the six yard box coming from that left back position for the Bulls. Again, just no one on the end of that. McLaughlin comes back for the ball. Yeah, that ball just continued to knock blades of grass over slowly through the 18 in front of the face of Makala in frame, but no bull was able to pounce on it soon enough. Again, in the American, no predetermined championship site. Number one seed will host. Now the change this year is the fact that they will not host the first round during which they have a bye. As the three seed and four seed will each host matches on their respective campuses against the five seed and six seed. Winners then move on to the championship site. I like to think I was able to explain that, but I realized there was a chance that it was overcomplicated. Pretty straightforward, though. A minor tweak to the format this year. And last year, the women came here to Tampa, the men to Orlando. It is looking like the women are headed to Memphis this year if things continue the way they have. And it is wide open on the men's side so far. A lot of soccer to be played this month. And Harrison Devonish Mears has played every minute in goal for the Bulls this year. Just conceding six goals this season. Big part of why they're six and two now. Their losses at Maryland and against Ohio State. And they were leading Tulsa just prior to the 70th minute, 2-1. to one. On their way, maybe, to a 2-0 start. We won't pretend that nothing's going to transpire in the final 20-plus minutes of a match. But they were unable to play the required minimum of 70 minutes to make a match official. And as a result, you don't just pick up that match from that moment. You reset it. Mustangs back on the attack. Costa, well played. Right on to the boot of McLaughlin, but he cannot get one past Devonish Mears, who takes advantage of that slight hesitation. It was initially Javane Brown who made a nice defensive play, but eventually gives the ball back 
to a USF or a SMU defender. Eventually comes to cost a nice little outside foot pass into the path of McLaughlin. And ultimately, Mears recovers, and USF survives. So the Bulls avoid disaster on one end and a chance still to take an advantage if they can find their first shot of the night. And it still won't come. SMU officially with three shots here in this opening half as we are midway through. Great to have you with us tonight, Corbett Stadium and all of its rich history, along with soccer in general, both the collegiate ranks and professional ranks here in the Tampa Bay area. We are in Tampa tonight on the campus of USF. And the Bulls are hanging in there with the number three team in the land. And how often do we see a side like, for in this instance, SMU, control play for much of the match, but never find that goal, and all of a sudden, a team like the Bulls, led by Bob Butehorn, take advantage of that one opportunity they get, and all of a sudden, they capture the full three points. That is absolutely the storyline that could, could transpire here. This Bulls side is not weak going forward. They can score goals, and they do defend fairly well. Again, the Mustangs have had their chances so far early on here in the second, in this first half, excuse me. It really is just about finishing them. Bob Horn's come in. Great culture developed here with this program. Uh, they'll try to test the Bulls once more now. Costa. Return to sender. Devinish Mears, right place, right time. We are still scoreless. In Tampa. Again, talking about finishing chances. Beautifully worked ball here coming from Costa. It's a nice little give and go. Great first touch. The ball just under the attacker, just a little bit. Can't get a clean strike. Mears with an easy save. And again, that's the third, that's the third opportunity the Mustangs have had. Last Let's goal go we board. saw from Knut Allender was that victory against Central Arkansas. Earlier this month, he's still stuck on four goals after he was unable to get that one past the Bulls keeper. Well, we've seen some spectacular passes, just have not seen the punctuation as of yet from SMU. As Guyana gets things restarted here for USF. Bulls lost their top two goal scorers from a year ago. One to graduation, one to transfer. I know one of the questions this year was who was going to step up. Of course, Emilio Icaza back this year was your third leading goal scorer last year. He's already matched the three goals he put up all of last year. As he has three of the 11 scoring strikes for USF this season. Bulls just beyond 30 yards. Inside the 18, this will slip away. Still have not found a shot against SMU's defense. So far, the Bulls look, look a little bit clueless when they get forward. Seems to be a lack of movement off the ball, and they seem to run out of options quickly. And Grant Makla has split time this year with Shane Lanson. Although moving forward, that net belongs to Makala. 90% save percentage going into that outing against UCF before he saw three balls get past his line. And overall, has had a great presence back there. We can get caught up with how many saves a goalkeeper has in a season, but it is never your goal to lead the country, let alone your conference, in saves. 
if you're doing your job along with those three to four men in front of you, that ball isn't getting back to you very often. Obviously, some nice lineage in goal there for SMU in recent years that has led to the next level. We expect to see a handful of uh, men from both these programs in the near future at that next level. Bulls going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number three team in the country tonight. A valuable result in conference play on the line. USF and Memphis still the your remaining unbeaten, untied squads. SMU and UCF also unbeaten. But that was a win for everybody outside of Dallas last weekend when SMU and UCF had to split the points and leave one on the table. A ball sent in, back post. Great delivery from SMU, and they still can't send it home. A pair of Mustangs collide. It seemed like a sitter there, that back post. Ball should have definitely hit the back of the net. I'm not sure how exactly it didn't. Tim Debbie saying is expressing concern for Garrett McLaughlin after he saw some contact to the head. And Devin Schmears, who is not going to be able to get to that ball, just sees a couple of Mustangs collide with one another. McLaughlin will remain in the match, appears to be okay. Another threat survived by USF. Inside the 18. And this will just eclipse the end line. Nothing more than a goal kick here from Makala, but the Bulls perhaps are getting closer. SMU has not been able to win set piece opportunities for themselves, but their ability to throw that ball deep inside the area has been the next best thing. And the Mustangs back line does just enough. Now into space, Devonish Mears will have to play this with his feet. Shifting the play back to midfield. Do you want me to recycle the power on the live view? I mean, realistically, this conference tournament, it would not be hard to imagine it being in Memphis, Orlando, Dallas, or right here in Tampa. There is going to be a lot of exciting weekends keep an eye on over the next month and a half. What's so fun about watching this league? This conference is filled with so much talent and it really is really tight at the top of the conference and the top four teams. They seem to be interchanging every week. You saw Josue Monhe on the touchline ready to come in at the next opportunity. The junior out of Philly. Good spell of building possession so far here. Opportunity from 20 on the money. And again, it's Costa. A classic from the Brazilian. Well, you knew it immediately, right when he put it on that right foot and took a touch, that he was going to try to curl that into the near post. He did just that. It was a beautiful bit of possession leading up to the goal. And leave it to Costa to put it in the back of the net. We're going to see it again here. Afforded too much space to work with. That clearance from Javane Brown just simply isn't good enough. Comes straight to a Mustang who lays it off to Costa. And again, as you said, whenever you see him set up on that right foot, you can bet that it's going to hit the back of the net. So, again, 
Costa, who claimed all conference honors this past week for his offensive show. Could be looking for honors again here with a performance on the road. That is goal number five from Gabriel Costa. And our first caution comes out from Mr. Debbie Singh. As this one against Eddie Munjoma. You see Munjoma just trip up the USF left back, trying to get forward. He's been causing problems here and there. We're going to see him just get their feet tangled. Maybe makes a meal of it a little bit, but does draw a very dangerous opportunity for a free kick. Can the Bulls answer back with a dangerous set piece? Bulls down by a goal. Still looking for that first shot of the match here on their home pitch. That was a decent inswinger, but dealt with well by the Mustangs. And a flag up. As this one back over to SMU, stress free. It's a lot of intelligent young men that Kevin Hudson is able to bring to campus to play soccer for him. Of course, in college soccer, you're not given enough full scholarships for an entire roster and with SMU which we're not sharing any secrets here is a private school uh, you need guys who can find their way to some academic scholarships to help pay the way but that classroom IQ has in recent years translated to a high soccer IQ as well for Kevin Hudson's group And years like last year when they lost a lot of just unparalleled talent. They still had enough heart and intelligence to find a way to win each night. Cost of the difference maker right now. As SMU, the first team all year to score in the first half against USF. For USF, obviously, it's hard to lose matches if you're never trailing, especially early. We've even seen some great teams that are prone to giving up goals early in matches, but able to dig their way out. But for a rare occasion, the Bulls now are chasing. We see another opportunity here for a set piece. Not enough bodies in the box in that last bit of play. Only Bill Hart and one other player in the box has options. Opportunity to find that equalizer right here. Delivered off the left boot. Top of the six ultimately will be set back wide. But opportunity still alive here for USF. And Flanagan will have it taken away. Bill Hart. And the Mustang is able to get a body on it. About 14 yards from Makala, who still does not need to intervene. Well, that's probably the Bulls' most dangerous piece of play there. And again, they still don't trouble the goalkeeper Makala. It's not a bad, it's not a bad corner kick in. Just glances off the off the head of a bull and off the knee, and eventually goes wide. Both teams seem to be committed to play short as we see Costa coming off the field for a bit of a rest. So the Bulls officially get a shot for their efforts, but it was not one that was going to cause Makla to break a sweat. This ball will belong to the Bulls. Right now they're waiting. For Guerrero to shake things off. Yeah, 
Gabriel Costa with the lone goal so far here in the first half. He had the final goal for SMU in the comeback against UCF to force a draw. Gives SMU a lead, something they never had against those Knights back in Dallas. Both these teams traveled to Tulsa. For SMU, it was a 5-1 to one victory on the road. Looking for insurance, Devinish Mears will keep it at just a lone goal for now. It was Mears that ultimately put his team in danger with a terrible, a terrible clearance from inside the box. Gave it straight to a Mustang in midfielders. We're going to see it here. Nice piercing ball straight into the forward there. Gets it unstuck out of his feet, but Mears with the save. Hollander still searching for that fifth goal of the campaign. And the sophomore from Norway. That's a second shot on goal. It's forced to save from Mears. Tervega will test this back line. And Mustangs land on another one. A little sidestep courtesy of Warrington who got the start tonight. And this will be a kick from midfield for SMU. Just one card handed out tonight, Eddie Munjoma, but we'll note that USF already three times this year has finished up a man as their opponents, whether it be an accumulation of yellows or straight red, have had a tough time finishing at full strength. Obviously, Munjoma will have to be careful the rest of the way and avoid gambling. Devinish Mears almost gift-wrapped one. Speaking of gambling... Mustangs back on it. Well-spaced, extra pass, left-booted delivery. 2-0 for SMU. And Allender, who had come close on a couple of occasions here in the opening 45, finally able to strike with his fifth. It's the second time Mears has put his team in danger, and this time he has to pay for it. And it's Allender with his third strike on goal. The first two were saved by Mears, but this one he makes no mistakes. Beautiful left-footed finish into the bat into the bottom corner of the net, and it's 2-0 SMU. Garrett McLaughlin made the choice he had to make. The young man who already has eight goals this year for SMU lays that one off for a high percentage assist to Hollander. It really was a beautiful finish. Made no mistake about it. Struck the ball with confidence into the corner. There's nothing Mears can do. So McLaughlin making the right call with the unselfish pass. For more, let's check in uh, in a moment. We'll have a chance to check in with Andy. All right, let's go ahead and send it down to Andy. Well, Gary McLaughlin definitely has been a key player for the team this year. Coming back from injury after last season, during his junior year, he was sidelined or he actually played through stomach pains that were very severe and definitely limited his abilities. But this year, Coach Hudson says they wear a GPS, they track him, and his speed is significantly better, and it definitely has been showing tonight. Andy, thank you very much. Mustangs, after they've been shut out for much of this first half now, have already found... Two goals against a Bulls side, which had not trailed going into the locker room all year. Bulls still with a chance to answer in these final nine and a half minutes. The problem is they have struggled to even find shot attempts at the frame occupied by Grant Makala, who all of a sudden has insurance to work with back there. And Mustangs in black threatening once again. They've done a nice job keeping this great crowd quiet. I think it might be another big throw into the box. You know, I said Garrett McLaughlin had eight goals. They do credit him with that second goal for SMU against UCF, giving him nine on the year. A borderline own goal situation. 
And the Bulls able to keep this a two goal deficit. Again tonight, your goals from Costa as well as Allender. Allender assisted Costa on that first scoring strike. McLaughlin found the second assist. And there's your most recent goal scorer coming off in his place. We see Wyatt Priest making his now eighth appearance on the year. Sophomore out of Coppell from the Dallas area, former Coppell High School Cowboy. They themselves have a pretty storied, uh, sport, storied boys soccer program. Yeah, the Dallas area capturing a lot of those state titles over there in the Lone Star State. Here's your first goal score. So both of Kevin Hudson's men who have found the back of the net right now out of action. We've seen a lot of great international talent at the NCAA Division II level, the same path that Costa took, which landed him in California with Azusa Pacific. And after one year transferring to Division I, landing with SMU. But we'll regularly see the teams that win the national championship in Division II are littered with international talent. Munjoma hoping to get it back. Munjoma with his left boot, just unable to send it wide of the opposing keeper in green tonight. Munjoma having all kinds of fun coming up from that right back position. And you saw him just continue his, his diagonal run, eventually gets on the end of that one with his left foot. It's a second opportunity at goal. This time Mir, Mears gets the best of him. Munjoma still now retreating back to that back line where his top priority is. Here is Eddie. Remember, he's playing on a yellow and will have to be careful. I was a bit reckless. Bulls down by a pair. Six minutes to go till halftime. And another non-threatening effort. That one comes from Jackson. And that wasn't a bad, bad idea, but obviously terrible execution. DJ Williams comes on his debut tonight. His 11th appearance overall. Sophomore out of Fort Worth. And McLaughlin gets his breather for the rest of this first half. See a few fans who have made their way into the ear of Mackelow over there. You imagine he'll have a few more messages sent his way in the second half when he is in front of that berm with the majority of the fans. Njoma. Is that joystick or the circle button? <laughs> the Mustangs can afford to take this ball for a walk and take some time off that clock. Again, as much success as SMU has had over the years, only once have they handed USF a loss. Bulls unbeaten in their last seven outings against this SMU side. Williams with his first opportunity. Williams still on it. DJ Williams sends one in, and it's deflected wide by Harrison Devonish Mears. And that was a great ball from the back line. And again, challenging Mears. I'm not sure how many saves he's had, but it's been more than a handful keeping this bullseye side in this match. Foul on SMU, this is a moment ago. Again, another beautiful ball in behind that back line. You see the pace that this player has, and a nice shot on goal, and again, Mears, staying strong, staying tall, deflects that ball wide. Just fingertips from Devonish Mears. Able to send that one off the mark. DJ Williams being dangerous, having only been on the pitch for a couple minutes, if that. Kevin Hudson, have to imagine, often confused as one of his own players. 
little over a decade removed from his last days as a Mustang on the pitch. As it looks like they checking out the mouth of Nicky Hernandez. Hernandez at times can take over a match in his own right. Bulls officially tonight, two shots. Both have been well off the mark. One, the first one came off a corner kick opportunity for USM. And you see Lorero coming on, the freshman from Brazil, making his fifth appearance now on the year. A little under 90 minutes total on the season. A chance to get some experience in here these final four minutes of the first half. Stick around before we step aside for halftime. A chance to catch up with one of our two head coaches. We'll hear from both of them before the start of the second half rolls around. Certainly appreciate the time of both Bob Butehorn and Kevin Hudson uh, prior to tonight's match. Uh, each great ambassadors for their respective programs. And the reason why there's a lot of optimism for the Mustangs and the Bulls going into each season. Much of this half, a scoreless draw until SMU erupted for a pair of goals, beginning with Costa from about 20 yards out straight away. Well, recently, Allender received a ball that he had no choice but to slot home after McLaughlin found him wide open at the edge of the area. And Hernandez back in. Officially 10 shots to two for the men in black. Seven of those 10 shots on frame. And that has meant a busy night for Harrison Devonish Mears. As the flag is up. Kevin Hudson appreciated that last year when necessary his men could win ugly. Able to grind out some of the battles that you're going to see in the American each year. All chipped in. On the money again, and Devonish Mears again puts palms to the ball and keeps it out of his front. Well, the only reason that this bull side is even near into this game is because of Mears. I believe it's Tervega who had the header, and quickly now the counter opportunity building for USM, but could not link up with that ball as Stephen Rutterham had brought it forward. Great hustle and recognition by the Mustangs to get back in defense, not let the Bulls have a successful fast break. In limited set piece opportunities for each side, just one corner apiece. We've seen a few free kicks sprinkled in as well. One of the hidden stats are those throw-ins for SMU, which they can often send into the heart of the area. As we're in the final minute of this opening half, the number three team in the nation has come to Tampa tonight to take on a talented Bulls side that started 1-0 and in conference. Nearly 2-0 and before a match ultimately had to be called due to weather with no result. Postponed to a later date. And SMU finding two goals here before halftime. Can the Bulls steal one back in the final seconds before intermission? Opportunity from 35. As this one deflected wide, and Makala would never have to lay a hand on the ball in that first half. 
Along the way, his Mustangs have claimed insurance. They lead 2-0. Kevin Hudson, their head coach in year number five, is with Andy Wontor down on the sideline. Coach Hutchins, definitely enough shots on goal in the first half, and two of them were converted. What do you, how do you feel about the possession play that your team was playing? Yeah, I thought we kept the ball fine. We created enough chances. We could have been a little more ruthless in front of goal, but... You know, you're happy up 2-0 at half for sure. Gabriel Costa definitely showing exactly what everyone thought he is like. Um, just how strong of a player is he for your team? Yeah, Gabriel's outstanding. Yeah, when they can get Canute and Gabriel can get close and McLaughlin can run off them and we get the wingbacks forward, we can create some good chances for sure. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Andy, thank you, and we appreciate Coach's time. We'll have a chance to chat with Bob Butehorn at the end of halftime. But for now, we step aside from Tampa, Florida. SMU, number three team in the land, looking to remain unbeaten and pick up another valuable victory in the American by the end of the night. At SMU, I found professors who care about my success. And the space to take risks. Make mistakes and grow quickly. These experiences are helping me chart my own course. Dallas is can-do culture and SMU support bring out the best in me. We are creators, innovators, disruptors, builders, and problem solvers shaping the future. If we think it, it gets done. That's the enterprising spirit of SMU. Come reimagine the world with us. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Time in Tampa. Mustangs with two first half goals right now leading the way and trying to find a rare victory at the expense of USM. Well, we saw the Mustangs pour forward early. A couple shots on goal and Mears with seven or eight saves, I think it is, in this first half. And we're going to see Costa very influential in this first half. Beautiful chip ball into the McLaughlin that was ultimately gathered by Mears. But here, we're going to see a beautifully worked sequence here that again was saved by Mears. That's the story almost of the first half. Another dangerous set piece that somehow didn't find their way, its way into the back of the net. Again, poor clearance there from Jovain Brown, which is uncharacteristic of him. And when you see Costa get to that right foot, it's going to go into the back of the net. Mustangs have just been able to move this ball so well, possessing for the majority of that opening half. Uh, you heard Kevin Hudson say, they could have maybe been a little bit more ruthless finishing around the frame. I think they got what they had a chance to get. There were some close calls, but anything that they were denied, you've got to give full credit to the opposing keeper in frame and Harrison Devonish Mears. Absolutely. Keeping his team in the game, as we're going to see there from DJ Williams, another great shot on goal that was saved. And again, we're going to see it there. Another beautiful save. SMU outshoots USF officially by a tally of 11 to 4. All four of those shots come in late for the Bulls, but still unable to get one past Mackle to pull back a goal in their column. Again, we have reached halftime in Tampa. You're watching American Men's Soccer on the American Digital Network. Welcome into the ADN studio for a quick look at the Americans' top headlines. I'm Haley Outen. In men's soccer for the first time since 2013, the American has two men's soccer teams ranked in the top 10 of the United Soccer Coaches Poll. Following Sunday's 3-3 draw, both SMU and UCF moved up in the polls, the Mustangs now at number three and the Knights at number nine. At number three, SMU has tied the highest ever ranking for an American men's soccer team. Also, make sure to tune in this Friday as SMU and USF square off live on the American Digital Network on Facebook at 8 p.m. Eastern. On the women's side, USF senior forward Evelyn Vienne tallied seven points last week and became the Americans' all-time leading scorer with 143 points, breaking the previous record of 140 set by UConn's Rachel Hill. Vienne, a two-time All-American, ranks third in the nation in goals and points per game. In volleyball, Tulsa's Taylor Horsefall becomes just the fourth player in the history of the American and the second this season, along with Tulane's Kaylee McHugh, to surpass 2,000 career digs. Meanwhile, Cincinnati and Houston each move to 4-0 to secure the top spots in both the East and West divisions. 
In football, SMU wide receiver James Prochet was chosen as the Walter Camp National Offensive Player of the Week. Prochet had 11 receptions for 153 yards and two touchdowns, including the game-winning TD in the third overtime period against Tulsa. The Mustangs are unbeaten at 6-0, entering an open week. To follow along with the top storylines from around the conference, you can head to theamerican.org or follow along on Twitter at American underscore comp. My name is Chris Paul, and I am a computer information systems major and cybersecurity minor at the University of Tulsa. I am an offensive lineman on the football team. It's important to me to get a college education because higher education opens up a plethora of opportunities. In five years, I would like to see myself in the NFL or as the United States Secretary of Defense. <laughs> Two very different spectrums. <laughs> I became a member of SAC because I truly enjoy being involved within my community and within my school. Hidden talents. Hmm. I can really sing. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that I have the pipes, but I can I can really belt out a couple of notes. <laughs> the way it's set up right now, I don't think, really think I'm prepared for that. Rain came, baby. for a fourth straight year. Waiso from 30! Unbelievable! And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker! They are the champions of the American. My name is Kira Damas and I'm a Masters of Statistics student at the University of Connecticut. I am recently retired. I used to be a defender on the lacrosse team. It's important to me to get a college education because Number one, I love to learn. Uh, I'm a big dork about learning anything and everything that I possibly can. In five years, I see myself as owning my own statistical consulting firm. My heroes, which it's totally cliche, but my heroes are my parents. I became a member of SAC because I love to help people. I'm really good with my hands at things, like I'm building a table for my apartment. I used to be in honors art classes. The best advice anybody has ever given me is Accept the fear of failure. Don't be afraid to fail because it's not failing, you're just learning. Go Huskies! My name is Claire Embry. I'm a medically retired volleyball player and I am an advertising PR student at the University of South Florida. It's important for me to get a college education because a college education is knowledge and if you don't have knowledge you can't grow in this world and so I just always, that's like the highest value that I really have so I'm actually going to get my master's degree also. In five years I don't have a certain idea of exactly what I want to do. I have two different paths but I know I love sports. I love communications and advertising and public relations and also connecting with people throughout like the sports administration so we'll see where things lead me. The best advice anybody's given me is probably just to be yourself and shine through and not let anything hold you back from your dreams and goals. I have several hidden talents. I'm really good at spinning a ball on my finger so it's kind of my party trick. <laughs> Go Bulls! Undeniable. 
At SMU, I found professors who care about my success. And the space to take risks. Make mistakes and grow quickly. These experiences are helping me chart my own course. Dallas's can-do culture and SMU support bring out the best in me. We are creators, innovators, disruptors, builders, and problem solvers shaping the future. If we think it, it gets done. That's the enterprising spirit of SMU. Come reimagine the world with us. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Well, the Mustangs come to Tampa facing a Bulls side that had not given up any goals in the first half all year long. And SMU able to find that back of the net. Two different goal scorers in that first half. Of course, all this part of our fall sports coverage on the American Digital Network. Women's soccer, men's soccer, volleyball all underway. And, of course, the first time we'll crown a champion will be in Memphis, Tennessee. The men's and women's cross-country titles on the line the first day of November that Friday morning. And the Women's Soccer Championship, of course, still don't know where we are headed right now. If Memphis takes care of business the rest of the way, they are off to a brilliant start. They went on the road, played both Florida schools, picking up victories at the expense of both UCF and USF women along the way, and just continue to handle business. Pretty good chance that Tennessee will be also the site for that Women's Soccer Championship. We step aside here at half. When we come back, a chance to check in with Bob Butehorn, head coach of these Bulls, as they get ready for the second 45 minutes of play. Bernie scores! Three strikeouts in a row. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Queso from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the second championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Right now, the SMU Mustangs enter this week, ranked number three in the nation at the moment, living up to those expectations against a very good USF Bulls side. This is a Bulls program that, of course, you never know what you're going to get in your conference opener. They took on a hungry UConn side and took care of business 2-1 to one against those Huskies. I think Bob Butehorn overall was pleased with the, getting the overall result there. And, of course, against Tulsa, uh, talking to him. Thought they were very efficient in front of the net against Tulsa and what officially never happened, of course. So we'll see them against the Golden Hurricane later on this year to make up that match, but gave up one unfortunate goal today against a quality SMU side and SMU able to pounce on a few miscues and create opportunities in their own right. Well, again, this is a solid USF side. They are, one of their two losses was to then number five Louisville. So they are a solid side, but SMU, again, just number three in the country. Uh, absolutely agree with Coach Hudson probably should have been a little bit more efficient in front of goal. This could have been a lot worse if not for the brilliance of Mears and goal. Both teams making their way back onto the pitch. We're still a minute or two away from the start of the second half. This was a scoreless matchup for much of that first half as it was scoreless between UCF and SMU at halftime before we saw an eruption of six goals in that second half. Uh, could we see a similar amount of fireworks here in Tampa tonight as part of a Bulls comeback? 
this Bulls team has to find something within themselves to sort of push forward and be a little bit more active when they're on the front foot in and around the box. Bill Hart was under, was on the ball a good amount in the first half, but it looked like whenever he was on the ball, he would just run out of options. It was unfortunate because he was working hard, coming back, dropping in deep into the midfield, trying to look for the ball and win possession, but none of his striking partners and midfield partners were running off of him enough. So we'll see what he can contribute and what the rest of his teammates can contribute in the second half. Again, they have made Corbett a fortress thus far, but SMU obviously with the 2-0 lead on the front foot here in the beginning of the second half. And there's been a lot of great soccer played over the years here in Tampa on this pitch with both the women's program with uh, Coach Shilty Brown and of course now with Bob Butehorn at the helm. A lot of great results by the end of the 90 minutes. And again, USF hasn't had to play more than 90 minutes yet this year. This is while well, SMU is coming off another match of extended play against UCF. I don't think USF would have, would mind their first overtime matchup tonight if it meant that they were able to erase this deficit along the way. And I mentioned we expected those fans would stay on that berm, which all of a sudden means they are within shouting distance of Grant Makla. Who officially did not have to come up with a save in that first half. Uh, four shots were recorded for the home side Bulls. Well, we had a chance to hear from Kevin Hudson at the end of the first half. Andy with a chance a moment ago to check in with Bob Butehorn of USF. And let's check in with Andy to learn what coach had to say. Simple. He is very disappointed with the way the team played in the first half. He just said it was just a bad half all around. Zero shots on goal, just nothing that they expected coming out. So we definitely gave him a talking to, I'd say, at half. Maybe that's why he was a couple of seconds late coming back out from the halftime. Andy, thank you. And USF colliding with one of the top teams in the country, not just in the American this year. They'll be tested again with that war on I-4 with those men from Orlando. They are scheduled to play October 26th right here in Tampa in that rivalry clash with the Knights of UCF. After tonight, USF will dip outside a conference to play Jacksonville here for traveling to Philadelphia next weekend to take on Temple. A lot of quality men's programs uh, inside the state border. Opportunities to continue to grow even once conference play is underway. One of those teams they faced in non-conference play recently, of course, was the old stomping grounds of Bob Butehorn, Flo Florida Gulf Coast, a 1-0 decision for USF. Bulls in the home whites tonight. That's SMU in the all-black. Bob Butehorn and his staff, year number three together. Doing Jeremy Hurdle and Matt Poplowski. And this ball will stay with USF. Again, another set piece opportunity. They have to take advantage of these. At least force a save. Start to get into the mind of this SMU team, but they can possibly come back. Start to, start to try to switch the momentum. Six different Mustangs accounted for those 11 shots for SMU in the first half. And eight of them on frame. Two of them able to find their way Past the opposing keeper. Bulls trying to cut this deficit in half. And an opportunity that just comes up short. As SMU had left that back post vulnerable. And Flanagan just could not convince that ball to take a left turn. Well, this is what I was talking about. A beautiful ball in. And Flanagan recognizes it. Makes a beautiful run. Just doesn't get enough on it to steer it onto goal to force a save. That was the best opportunity so far for the Bulls. And it should have been 2-1. Those are opportunities that you have to be able to capitalize upon. 
Flanagan, yet another dynamic defender here in the American. Well, he's a player that uh, at left back can contribute into the goals and assists. I think he's the assist leader for the Bulls so far this season. And he's a dangerous player going forward. Yeah, he's sitting on five assists. He had a goal and an assist in that Tulsa match that ultimately were wiped off the board since it did not go the requisite 70 minutes to qualify as a match. But they have a good one in the junior from Baltimore, who a moment ago almost found that first goal officially. Again, about 80 degrees in Tampa here in October on this Friday night. Goals from Costa and Allender in the first half for SMU. Costa already with multiple all-conference accolades this year in terms of player of the week showings. Bulls, a little momentum pushing forward. Now back to the boots of Flanagan. Preseason all-conference sends this one in. Another beautiful pass. This time it was Flanagan with the distribution. But nobody able to fire it past Makala. I love the intensity that Flanagan is playing with here early on in the second half. Running at the defender, putting a beautiful, that's the second gorgeous cross he's put in that his teammates could not get on the end of. Really not doing that service justice, unfortunately, for Flanagan. But he'll need to keep pushing forward and keep playing with confidence if USF is going to have any chance of getting a goal back. Well, again, Grant Makla, if he hadn't taken the price tag off those gloves, they'd still be eligible for return. That was a good idea from Bill Hart, just not quite enough on that through ball. As Avion Flanagan keeps this ball in play. Makla for the first time tonight intervenes. Shot on frame for the Bulls, courtesy of Claudio. It was a beautiful idea and a great turn. The Bulls are getting closer and closer. That's the kind of creativity that USF is going to need. Sort of a shot out of nowhere. It was a good idea. It was a shot on goal, finally. Victor Claudel, the freshman from France, in the center of that pitch, sent one on frame, and Makala finally having to swat one down. It's Devonish Mears who's living a little higher quality of life these days back in frame. As he's seen his Bulls come close now on a couple of occasions on the opposite end. We see that halftime team talk must have worked for the USF Bulls. Playing with much bigger intensity. Trying to pour forward and get numbers into, the, into that box. And we've seen Flanagan push forward the most. And get in the most quality servers so far. We'll see what Bill Hart can do here on the ball. Again, not a lot of support. He's going to need to hold this ball up or draw a foul as he just did. This ball stays with USF. Bill Hart and the Bulls trying to create an opportunity off the counter. Bill Hart also had a goal negated from that Tulsa matchup last weekend. We'll send one in. Again, looking at that back post of, back post of Flanagan. It's not a bad idea. Jonathan Rosales was trying to create an opportunity on that post. Rosales has been one of the real pleasant surprises for Bob Butehorn this year. The senior, just the way he approaches wrapping up his college career, the leadership has been an unsung player who's been a, just a constant on that back line. You saw involved in the free kick there a moment ago. Another opportunity with Claudel. L. 
And just a numbers game adding up against Monet. We see the Bulls have more numbers forward than they ever did in the first half. So this is a good bit of play from them so far. Still looks like there's an extra black shirt or two out there on that pitch. Weston, you've done a good job of plugging up the holes. Very good movement off the ball defensively. McLaughlin. He's received a lot of attention his last two trips down the pitch, rightfully so. He had the assist on Allender's insurance goal in that first half. Again, SMU in that draw, 3-3 against UCF, never had a lead. Twice the Mustangs trailed by multiple goals. But an advantage here tonight on the road. Quick touch from Philip Ponder on that back line. Another one of those Dallas area products in his senior campaign from Denton. Looking for Flanagan in space. And let's see what Tim Devysing has to say as Flanagan at the moment goes down. He was jostling for that ball, trying to win a corner kick. I believe at the moment just a goal kick pending. And now a timeout called for trainers to 10 to the junior. It's good defending there from SMU. Just shepherding that ball out. And Avian Flanagan, unfortunately, not a lot there. Oh, it does look like a bit of a stamp to the groin. Whether that was intentional or not, who knows, but definitely not fun there for Flanagan. Matched up there with Tervega. And those were just, looked like two guys jostling the whole time. And then finally, unfortunately, tangled up at the end. Mackle has been a little bit busier back in frame this half after some adjustments for USF. Flanagan will have a chance to come back on in a moment. After play was stopped for him. Again, SMU was vulnerable in that second half last week. Of course, they were also successful in that second half last week. They conceded three and found three goals. It's after they had only given up two goals after halftime all year. They've still now only given up to the total of six goals this season. And the Bulls get, luckily, the first touch there back to Devonish Mears under their own terms. This ball belongs to USF. Great to have you with us on this Friday night here on the American Digital Network. Lena Rose, Thomas Garensway, Andy Wontour. And we were here a couple weeks ago for the women's matchup with Memphis and USF. And of course, last year for the women's championship. The folks here at USF have done a great job. Always appreciate their hospitality and support. We've been spoiled with the start of our schedule with men's soccer, women's soccer, and volleyball. All of the, our clashes so far have either been rematches of last year's championships or certainly matchups like tonight with impressive programs. Number three team in the nation, SMU, up against a 
quality USF side. As Bob Butehorn's squad has come out focused here in this second half, finding their first shot on frame, close to sending it home. They have come knocking on several occasions here in this opening 15 minutes out of the break. Well, there's a decent spell of possession there for the Bulls. Just want to see them a little bit, be a little bit more patient rather than sending a ball to nobody over the top. Grant Makala looking for his fourth shutout of the season. If SMU can hang on to this score line. More importantly, SMU would improve to two wins and a draw through their first three matches in conference play. Claudel wants it back, but cuts off his run. Bulls back out to Flanagan. He's been dynamic, both receiving passes and creating. You imagine if the Bulls find a goal here in the second half, he'll be a part of it. That was just unfortunate. It ran out of real estate there. Did blow, blow past the defender. Unfortunately, the ball goes out to touch. Bulls picked to finish fourth this year by the coaches in the preseason poll. Again, UCF number one. After hosting the tournament last year, SMU was picked to finish second. Not much separates those two programs as we saw last weekend. And Memphis... Certainly does not want to be forgotten right now. They are the only team to win both of their matches to start conference play. And Kevin Hudson, again, very loose before the match with his players. Of course, relatively young. Played last decade for SMU. And has been very successful early on here in his career. At the same time, he's never going to be content just with the success they've had so far, always looking for ways to keep improving as postseason play comes around and is expected for the Mustangs. Again, another dangerous opportunity here for USF. Rosal is sitting on two goals and assists this year. But it's Bill Hart with his left boot on that back post looking for Flanagan. But the Mustangs had enough numbers in the area. And credit to Philip Ponder holding his ground. It was Javane Brown that was in the back post and almost got ahead on it as we're going to see it here. It's a quality ball in there from Bill Hart. No chance for the keeper to come out. And it's ultimately cleared by SMU. And it was a tough clearance to make, but they did it just the same. But here, another dangerous set piece. Rosales with the corner. Makla punches it away. And still a little bit of chaos that SMU is just trying to survive as this ball will trickle into touch. Let's check back in with Andy. Well, Coach Hudson has been on his feet the entire second half, and he's been a little disappointed by the fact that USF has definitely come out a different team in the second half. He's been yelling at his own team to check their body language the entire time through, and he is not going to be happy about what's going on right now, Lincoln. No, as we cut away, you saw the collision with the goalkeeper from one of the Bulls, and while Makla was not going to lose his cool over it, some of his teammates were going to come in and you know, step up for Makala. Makala went out for that ball. Mustangs understandably taking offense with the collision. And that's just a 50-50 ball. It seems like mo both, both players have a right to go after it, but as a former defender myself, I don't 
I don't, uh, I don't blame the SMU defender for coming to the defense of his goalkeeper. Yeah, I don't think anybody believes there's ill will involved there by U.S. Uh, but you do so often see an offensive player recognize when a keeper is diving out like that. You tap the brakes a little, knowing that any tie to that ball is not going to go in your favor. Ultimately, cooler heads prevail. And Bulls had an opportunity a little bit earlier when they look for Flanagan on that back post. When Joma steps in here. Costa. You can only imagine all the calculations that are going through his mind right now. Do I pull the trigger? Do I create for another? Instead, this time chooses to reset. And there was a whistle as the foul against the Bulls. In USF, off to their best start in over a decade. 2009 started 6 1 and 1. Or 6 and 2 this year. Bulls have been vulnerable in the second half, haven't conceded anything here. And the response you were hoping for from USF there. On that ball into the top of the area, USF's actually been outscored this year in the second half, six to five after they had not allowed before tonight a goal in the first half. Here's one of your two goal scorers for the Mustangs, Allender coming off. As in his place, it is Henry Smith Hasty, his first appearance tonight for the freshman out of Los Angeles. And he's a guy who could be an everyday starter for a lot of programs, but he's stuck behind a couple of great midfielders for SMU. Costa pulled it off his right, looked to be setting up his left. USF kept throwing numbers at him, and this one will bend one. Eventually it gets to Nicky Hernandez, who gets a rip off. Doesn't trouble Mears at all. USF, after a nice showing in conference play last year, unfortunately, with the early exit in conference play, had a sub-500 record. They were not eligible for the NCAA tournament, despite a nice run in conference play. This year, they have set themselves up a lot better. So even if they don't claim the automatic bid out of the challenging American, they would be in line for an at-large bid if they can continue to build this resume. Ball chipped over. Again, good goalkeeping there from Mears. Harrison Devonish Mears is the reason why it is only a two-goal deficit. I'd say the reason. SMU with 12 shots, eight of them have been on frame. A rare corner kick here in this matchup. Just the second tonight for SMU. And we mentioned Smith Hasty inserted a couple of minutes ago into this matchup. His 11th appearance this year. Sends it in. And the Bulls get the first touch. Costa. As this one immediately deflected, Bill Hart. It is tough sledding for the Bull. Mustangs take it away, send one in the area, and another corner kick coming up for SMU. It's a great idea there from Costa looking for McLaughlin in the center of the box. And it's Javane Brown with the big clearance. Another opportunity to just put the game out of reach for SMU. So Costa, who at the moment is in line for the game-winning goal, will go out to handle the corner. In 
his first year with SMU. He'll keep it on the pitch. Now Costa sends one in, and you kind of got a glimpse at the idea there for the Mustangs. It'll take a deflection off of USF and set up another corner here for the visitors. It's a very nice hard and low cross there from Costa, and you see it's going to come off and deflect off the shin of Flanagan, which could have gone anywhere. Fortunately for SMU, or for USF, excuse me, it goes, just goes out for a corner and not into the back of the net. Luke Thompson will come on for Warrington, who got the start tonight. Thompson, the junior from the Austin, Texas area. Bill Hart on this one, but has not had much breathing room tonight. And a foul on SMU gives us back over to the Bulls, who have inside of 21 minutes for a comeback, right now trailing by two. At the next opportunity, Bob Butehorn will bring Trey Jackson on. Bulls with four shots in the first half have added three here, including a couple of opportunities that have tested Makala. You see Bill Hart dropping deep again, trying to make things happen for this Bulls side. And SMU will win it back. We'll also see Freddie Gill, the junior from West Palm Beach, come on at the next opportunity. And if you're up two goals, as much as you may want to defend your teammate's honor, you are doing yourself a great disservice. When you make yourself vulnerable to a card. Now at the moment, Tim Debbie saying not reaching for his pocket. And that may change here in a moment. All seems so unnecessary, doesn't it? It was Ponder who was involved in that last altercation when he was trying to stick up for Makala earlier this half. We mentioned Bob Butehorn's squad has had a knack of drawing red cards on their opponents. Sometimes that just means you're a physical team that can get under your opponent's skin. Three times USF has finished with more men on the pitch than their opponent. No caution here. As Javane Brown over this one gets us restarted to Bill Hart. Flanagan. Oh, poked away. What a matchup that is. Two of the best defenders in the American because they both have a knack for offense on a collision course there. Munjoma able to slow things down as Bill Hart will step off, perhaps a little hobbled. Well, he's worked hard for his Bulls team. Deserves a bit of a rest, but I would put him back out there as soon as I could. He's been the most dangerous player so far for USF, trying his best to create some chances for his team. Yeah, when that ball has wound up on the Germans' feet, all of a sudden optimism renewed for USF. Um, his Mustangs have not given him much space to work with. One of the more one of the more experienced players on the team as well. They really do lean on him, lean on him offensively. Well, 
SMU closing in on 18 minutes. And this match trying to pick up a valuable road victory and remain unbeaten. Both goals came in the first half. Costa and Allender each adding to their accounts here in 2019. The Bulls have been much more dangerous here in the second half, but SMU showing some defensive solidity here. And Hernandez, they get him high and low. Mickey Hernandez showing some skill. Get past the defender. Ultimately is dragged down. It's a terrible tackle there. <laughs> Are you saying it was not a form tackle um, by any sports ta any sports uh, standards. definition standards? Yeah. <laughs> Probably fortunate not to be booked, but we've seen a fairly lenient uh, judge and jury here tonight. Costa. Could he find a brace? Still on it. And you understood. And as Smith Hasty was trying to return that ball back to number 11. And Costa, you see him just light up when he's around the box. Really shows a lot of attacking flair. He really is just so dangerous. Oh, not on the same page there as the ball sent out to the wing where all of a sudden the space was vacant. This will stay with SMU. Possession is on their side. They can try to melt more time off this clock. I see DJ Williams coming on there for SMU. Williams, who came close to finding a third goal tonight, comes on for McLaughlin. And Williams has a ton of pace. You saw he did have a chance on goal that was saved by, by Mears. And Larrero will come on as well for Claudel, who came close as that is one talented freshman for another. Remember, Claudel had that stroke from about 20 yards out. Look at the pace from Williams. Decent defending to stay with him from JV and Brown. Who ultimately wins that exchange. Larrero. Bulls still time for a comeback, but have been shut out thus far by SMU. Williams sends in a nice ball. Uh, the Bulls are just able to stay glued to it. Had there been a misstep, you'd have two Mustangs there to clean things up. That was a great ball into a dangerous area but there by Williams. And there is a bull down right now. It's Larrero who had just come back into the match, and now they will stop the clock to address the freshman. And all the way on the opposite end of the pitch, as it'll take the staff a moment to get to him. One of the few Brazilians involved on both sides of this clash tonight. His teammates doing a little quality control on the water. And that other Brazilian. And it'll be right on the edge. And it was a little bit earlier. Again right now, Larrero down for USF. And 
this where the injury occurred. Matched up with Hernandez. Oh. We see his ankle turn over and his knee buckle to the side of his left with his left leg. It didn't look pretty there. And it does look like he is grabbing the inside of his left knee. As his left leg got locked up with the back of the right leg of Hernandez. And we'll see if he's able to put any weight on that. Doesn't look good there from Barrero. That's so unfortunate. Be a long walk to the near side of the pitch. A couple of teammates will come in to really try to help him out there. That's Enrique Gaina, his fellow countrymen, helping him off. So inside 15 minutes, Bulls still with their work cut out for them. Ball back over to SMU with a two-goal lead on the road tonight. Mentioned the Bulls after tonight, out of conference against Jacksonville, then up to Philadelphia to square off against those Owls. Their next home match in conference play is four matches away. It'll be against UCF in what we're told is a bit of a rivalry. These Mustangs still with UCF fresh on their minds. Meanwhile, for SMU after tonight, another big test. They will have the benefit of being home against Memphis this year. Their next road trip in conference will be up to Cincinnati. As here is a young man who has come close to factoring into the score line. That was another dangerous throw there from McLaughlin. Almost fell to the feet to an SMU attacker. Luckily for USF, they do get it away, but Mickey end is back to his goalkeeper. Makala was under attack in the early minutes of this second half, but things have settled back in favor to the men in black. SMU Mustangs, who have the number three national ranking next to their name coming into this week. After going nine wins, no losses, and one draw through their first ten matches. Chipped in, back post. And Mustangs able, able to keep the intended bowl off of that one. That time continues to tick away on the opportunity for the Bulls to mount a comeback. Flanagan back on. He's come close to a goal. He's come close to an assist. But so far you see the result with that zero still next to USF. Top of the 18. Still an opportunity to pull the trigger here. Denied point blank. Able to shut down Monhe. Mustangs re remain disciplined. In front of Makala, who's only had to step up for one stop tonight. And a foul against SMU on that transaction. The Bulls have had plenty of opportunities for set pieces around the box, and they get another one here. Enrique Gaina, who a moment ago was helping his fellow countrymen off the pitch in Larrero with a chance here on this free kick. No shortage of Brazilians in Tampa, Florida tonight. Guy 
Molina from straight away. This one continues to climb up and over the crossbar. Well, we mentioned Lorero went out earlier. Let's get an update from Andy. Well, Lorero is still on the sideline. They are taking off his shoe, and they've got bags of ice for him, but no official word on whether or not he is going to be in back in the game. Yeah, Andy, thank you very much again. Uh, obviously, uh, the body language and the signs that we see would indicate he will not be factoring in to the final 11 minutes. You certainly hope it's not something that would keep him from factoring in to future contests here in conference play. But obviously shaking up, going down instantly after getting tangled up with Hernandez. And every time SMU is able to send that ball past the center stripe, more time coming off that clock. They were constantly climbing a hill, trying to climb out of a deficit at home last weekend. Able to settle for a 3-3 draw with six goals combined in the second half of that one. They are hoping that this proves to be a much less eventful second half after going into the locker room at halftime with the two goal advantage. Hernandez. It's about 80 minutes complete now between these two sides. Their lone regular season meeting. If they meet again, it will be in the conference tournament. We still don't know whether that's Dallas, Orlando, Memphis, or here in Tampa if the Bulls put together a run. Memphis, your only team at 2-0 right now in the conference. USF was the only other unbeaten, untied. As a Pharaoh had been calling for the ball, they'll work it up ahead, understandably, to Flanagan as Munjoma pokes this one in touch. And we'll have another substitution for Bob Butehorn as Claudel comes back on. So close to finding his third goal of the year earlier tonight at the start of this half. And DJ Williams again certainly. Brings a nice tempo with him whenever he's on the pitch as he checks back out now. It looks like Flanagan has been relieved of his defensive duties. It looks like he's playing on the left wing now, not having to come track back and defend. Now try to pour all of his, his abilities into his offensive side of the game. Gaina. Bill Hart, can he pull the Bulls back within one? They'll send one in as they are looking for that right foot of Trey Jackson. Uh, the junior, though, thwarted instantly by this Mustangs defense. And SMU had only given up two second-half goals before last weekend. They've still only conceded one goal in the first half, and obviously that's going to set you up for success. Rarely having to play from behind. Have yet to trail tonight. Makala will walk this back into his area. No obligation to scoop that one up until somebody steps into his zip code. Costa wins it back for the Mustangs. Costa again right now in line for the game-winning goal. 
as he had the first scoring strike. As we see Smith Hasty coming back on the freshman in place of Costa. Top of the 18, this one will go through the edge of the area. Let's see if Flanagan can escort this ball to the opposite end. see USF playing with a bit more of a sense of urgency in the last maybe 15 minutes, but really doing nothing to trouble this SMU defense. They've been solid today. Goalkeeper barely had to touch the ball. That really speaks to the strength of this back line and their ability to, to work themselves positionally very well. Plug those holes. Be able to put, play out the back to, to start to get their team moving offensively. It's a Mustang side that has not lost track of Bill Hart at any time tonight. Limiting his influence. Looking for insurance, and that's the nail for SMU. What a strike. <laughs> that was incredible. Henry Smith hasty his second career goal as he finds the scoring touch here in Tampa. Well, that was a 30-yard rocket. It was an unbelievable strike from Hasty. Again, all the room in the world, no one stepping to him, very lackadaisical defending, and no chance for Mears to get a touch on that. And why not take a shot if you can hit him like that? Again, that's a young man that as a freshman could be a starting attacking mid for a lot of teams around the country. But there are two guys ahead of him. So just finding minutes and opportunities has not been easy this year. But that is a look at his future to come of what he will bring to this SMU side. And it really did look like the two center backs from USF, Javane Brown being one of them, didn't think that he would, that the attacker would pull the, pull the trigger. Boy, did he pull, prove them wrong. It was an incredible strike from about 35 yards out to hit the back of the net. Bulls trying to pull that goal back and find their first scoring strike along the way. But right now, for the Mustangs, they believe to have that victory locked up. It's just a matter of finding a rare, clean sheet. It would be the fourth for Makala this year. be their seventh shutout overall this season. That's Luke Thompson trying to create a little bit of chaos. This will be the first loss for USF against SMU in their last eight meetings. USF had three wins and four draws, including a draw last year against the Mustangs during the previous seven meetings. Just the second ever victory for the Mustangs against the Bulls. That's saying something because it's not like the SMU Mustangs are just now becoming a good program. And Hernandez called for the foul here. And the Bulls put something together here in the final three minutes. Minor, stay tuned. We'll have a chance to chat with the victorious side upon the conclusion of this one. Flanagan. 
He's going to have a handful of highlights still to come here in the month of October. So close tonight. So far, him and Bill Hart have been their biggest attacking threat for the Bulls and been the most impressive players to me in this match. No, no doubt they're going to be very important going forward if, if USF are to challenge for you know, a top two position in this conference. Thomas Haney will handle this throw. Sophomore out of Houston. Well, urgency from Harrison Devonish Mears, who tonight officially with six saves, much of that in the first half. SMU producing 13 shots, nine of them on goal. Bulls created more opportunities this half, but unable to get one past Makala. Monhe, with that expression of not knowing where to go, is kind of the story of this match. Not a lot of movement off the ball from his teammates. And that really has been the death of USF in this matchup. Also credit to SMU for being compact in the midfield and in defense. And last corner with 55 seconds to go. We'll see what USF can produce here to try to maybe get a consolation in front of their home crowd. Ball sent in. Bulls looking to take that zero off the board. Makala has it. SMU is going to remain unbeaten in men's soccer. And we know that football program is not going to lose this weekend. They don't have a game on the schedule. It has been good times for the Mustangs this fall all throughout that athletics department. And when you're the Mustangs, you better be good at equestrian as well. And they've gotten off to a nice start as well. But Kevin Hudson's men are going to improve to two wins and one draw through their first three matches Victories over Tulsa and USF. The tie with UCF as 90 minutes complete tonight. Fourth shutout on the year for Grant Makala. His defense did their job. And, of course, the offense with three different goal scorers. The game winner from a two-time Offensive Player of the Week in this league in Costa, who may very well be up for another award. And Grant Makala... We mentioned a bit of a homecoming, had a little bit of a cheering section here on the road. That's what it seemed like. I mean, he almost needed it for the entertainment. He didn't do much. He did a little bit more here in the second half. Uh, had to clear a few, a few set pieces away in that box. But overall, solid performance from SMU. More than solid, I would say. Quite impressive, in fact, especially from Costa. Um, you really should see the depth of this squad and how mature they are uh, whenever they do go ahead to keep those leads. USF will have a chance to get back on track in non-conference on Tuesday against Jacksonville. Four of their next five matches will be here in Tampa. The exception is their next conference matchup at Temple in Philadelphia next Friday. Well, Andy is with the victorious Mustang head coach, Kevin Hudson. Let's check in with that pair. Coach Hudson, uh, definitely a great game for you guys, with the, especially with the amount of uh, shots on goal and three goals in the end. Uh, what do you tell your team after a game like this? Yeah, it's a good performance uh, to come away to a good USF team and to take three points on the road. That's, you know, if we want to be a top team, that's what we need to do. So, um, yeah, we're proud of the performance for sure. Makla didn't exactly have a lot of work to do back there in the net, but that's a credit to your back line. Yeah, I mean, Grant, Grant's solid. I mean, he didn't make a mistake. Um, yeah, the back three were really good, and the, and the two in front of them did a really good job tonight. So we didn't give up a ton of chances. A little, a little dodgy in the second half. We were in pretty good control in the first half, but... Yeah, overall, a very solid performance. And your player of the game, Gabriel Costa, the, the first goal of the game opened it up. Uh, just what does he bring to this team? Yeah, he can create. Anytime he gets the ball in the final third, there's going to be an opportunity. I mean, he will get a chance at goal or will set somebody up. And if you get him facing goal, you're going to create some good things. All right, and we'll have Gabriel join us now. Thanks, Coach. You're all done. Gabriel, first goal of the game. What does it mean uh, for you to be able to get here? Uh, it was a good goal. Um, I'm happy for this score. I'm more happy that we scored, that that we won, than that I scored. So 
we did, we did a great job. The job is done. Now let's go home and recover for the next one. Your first season with SMU, just what does it mean for this team uh, to have this kind of record starting the year? It's pretty good, I'm not going to lie. It feels really good. Um, I think we're ready since the beginning of the season. We're working really hard, so I, I think it's just paying off. The work that we put in, now we're receiving the awards for it. Thanks, Gabriel, and congratulations. Yeah, we are becoming the uh, Costa Digital Network's second straight weekend. We are talking to the Brazilian after a significant goal. It was him finding the penalty for a third goal against UCF last weekend. Today, it's because he found the first and what would prove to be the game winner against USF, of course, Allender, as well as Smith Hasty would find goals for the Mustangs as well. For Andy Wontor, along with Thomas Garensway, I'm Lincoln Rose. Big thanks to our entire American Digital Network crew in Tampa tonight as Mustangs take that number three national ranking on the road this evening to Tampa, Florida. They will remain in the top five in the country after a successful outing here in the Sunshine State. Three-nothing, your final here on the American Digital Network. Thank you.